What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York. We are at the King's Land in Brooklyn. We just wrapped up an awesome interview with Psycho Stick, and they're actually right behind the camera right now as we speak. But, <laughs> but we got another awesome interview. We are here with Yurizen. Thank you guys so much for your time. Hey, man. Thanks for talking to Thank us. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I was really st stoked to do this interview with you. I, you know, it was added last minute, but when I heard that you guys are very video game influenced behind your music, I was like, oh, we're going to nerd out so hard on yes, this sir. one. Yes, we are. Yeah. But before we get into that, your latest record, which is not exactly your latest record, but mm. Universe Red. Yeah, not which new anymore. <laughs> very old. almost yeah. a decade old. But right. latest is accurate. So. The latest <laughs> actual album is Universe Red. Yeah. 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 But how has the record cycle been this far, <laughs> this late into it? I mean, it's, it's good. Like... <clears throat> The important thing, I guess, that we try to keep telling ourselves is that there's a lot of people in the world that haven't heard it yet. So it's not like it's been out for a while, but it's not like, you know, everyone in the world's like, come on, we've heard enough of this. Give us something new. So we're trying to hold on to that mentality, you know. Yeah, we do these tours uh, and a lot of people are seeing us for the first time. So they're hearing us for the first time. So it's it's new to them. Uh, we've we've uh, released, a you know, a number of like singles and one-offs uh in that time and and occasionally we'll do like a, a limited edition pressing we call universe cardboard that has the full universe red album and then there's like maybe four or five extra songs that we've released in that time uh including one that we released as a single for the upcoming album like five years ago <laughs> which i guess goes to show our optimism back in the day of getting this new album done so yeah well, I mean, it's good to keep people waiting, and you know, I guess you're kind of like in a way teasing the new album. It's not like you haven't put out anything in ten years. Right? Yeah, that's the important thing is we we are you know releasing things as we can because there's that you want to just gather it all at once and and put it out there, but you know we understand it's important to kind of give little things here and there, especially if it's something we've worked on that we play live and people are like I really like that, and it's like well maybe we should give them a recorded version to check out, and so. I guess speaking of uh, the video game, nerding out on video games and talking about what we're talking about, one of those songs uh, we did for a, a chiptune compilation, uh, what would you call it, series? Yeah. Called uh, Chiptunes Equals Win, which if you're into like video game music, 8-bit, uh, uh, like straight chip or, you know, video game VGM inspired, uh, it's basically like they, uh, they're on volume seven now and it, and they're just getting bigger and bigger. I think each one now has like 30 tracks. Yeah. Uh, we did a, we did a song for one of their themed compilations about uh, Internet memes. Mm -hmm. And we, we settled on the uh, rustled Jimmy's <laughs> meme. So we have a song about that oh, yeah. <laughs> that was on that compilation. Well, hey, it's definitely a good song for the times. You know, in the yeah. 80s, in the 80s, a lot of heavy metal bands sung about partying and yep. and you know now now we're in this day and age there's nothing's fun anymore so we just write about memes <laughs> yeah Ru yep. memes, memes and, and russell jimmy's russell that's jimmy's that's pretty much my life nowadays yeah. remember that movie uh planes trains and automobiles this right. time like if they were to make a movie it'd be like memes games. and games and crippling depression <laughs> <laughs> wow that's, that's actually that, i think we just came up with the name for your I think new that's album. the slogan for <laughs> yeah. america now yeah. but um, being that, like, from listening to the Universe Red record, like, you know, it, it definitely, you know, you're touring with Psycho Stick right now and kind of like a metal-based crowd and stuff, but you definitely don't have to be a metal fan to necessarily appreciate your music, right? Yeah, and that's something that we've kind of been lucky to enjoy some crossover success. Like, we initially were just straight metal. I mean, years, years back, we were a black metal band, and then we transitioned into clean vocals and stuff like that. And we were kind of withering away in, in like the metal scene back home in Dallas. And uh, we actually met uh, the Proto Men in 2010. We played a show with them. And they kind of gave us a lot of advice, like play cons, you know, uh, play MAGFest, play this and that, and try to appeal to that nerd scene. And, for, like, yeah. Yeah, and for anyone that doesn't know, Proto Men, they're kind of like, it's it's kind of classic uh, rock inspired. Think like Queen, Johnny Cash, Meatloaf, but it's basically a rock opera about Mega Man. And uh, we <clears throat> we just happened to play this show. Well, going back a little more, we had tried you know uh, to figure out how to 
do things outside of the metal scene. So like we bought a table at like a science fiction convention and, and just try to think outside of the box. When we played with those guys, um, <clears throat> like suddenly the the crowd really responded to what we were doing a lot more so than like the local metal scene in Dallas at the time. And, uh, from there it's like, they're not a metal band. We kind of, you know, routed around the, the long way back to like doing tours with like we did, you know, uh, this is our third tour with Psycho Stick and uh, we did the one with the Necrogoblicon. Oh, you can't go wrong. I, Necrogoblicon was just here with Rings of Saturn, believe it or not. Oh, and nice. Like they were just so good. Yeah. Necro is amazing. I, I guess as a side tangent, I heard, I guess, like a lot of people with the No One Survives video was kind of my first introduction to them and like totally blown away and i love them and i was like man I w you know I w if we could play with them but it just doesn't fit like it's not like they're so heavy and like extreme and we're not and then um i think we played with them once in in pittsburgh like yeah, yeah we did and then we had the chance to jump on the tour with with them and psycho sick and it was like every night it was like a dream come true because you know to finally tour with a band that you like you know we toured with psycho sick and i'm not a fan <laughs> so <laughs> Still not. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Necrogoblicon, those guys are so talented and, and really awesome guys, too. So um, they're they're blowing up and they deserve it. And uh, yeah. wish them the best. Hi, guys. Now, um, kind of like going back to the video game topic music or video game music topic. Sorry, <laughs> my dyslexia there kicked in. But it, it's really interesting because, you know, a lot of bands would take like a pirate theme, like All Storm, and combine that sure. with it. And then, our, as we were talking about the band Tanger Calvary, how they took traditional Asian folk music, and a band like Tear that combines Faroe Island folk music in there. And you know, I've seen video game references a lot. Like, uh, I don't know if you know uh, one of our hometown friends, Mutoid Man. They they uh, oh, yeah. they actually sound test to the Castlevania theme music. Nice, yes. And you know, I've seen. I even read on Wikipedia that there was once a metal subgenre called Nintendo Core. Yeah, I think that was. Oh man, there was one band. It was like Math the Band, I think. Or no, no. There was uh, like four horse. bands on the Wikipedia band, page. Band horse named Horse. Band? Is that a? I don't horse know why. The horse the Band. They were. Oh yeah, they're is good. That math metal though. I thought they were the, the Nintendo. Maybe. Anamanaguchi. No, not that metal though. Someone, someone can correct. That's me. a real band name, Anamanaguchi. Yeah, I heard them. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I, I know, what I'm, I know what I'm looking up when I get yeah, home. Yeah, it's what? it's. Wild. Would you call Anamanaguchi metal? No, no, yeah. I didn't no, think they're so. Like, they're, they're pop rock, Nintendo, weird. <laughs> yeah, they're very weird. They're great. They're really good. Though. They've kind of got the that. List. <laughs> they've kind of got a mix between that like chip tune and like vapor wave aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to look them up later. <laughs> You're making stuff up now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm hip. I'm with it. <laughs> with it. <laughs> but w how do how do you take your love for video games and incorporate it in your music? I could obviously hear it in you know Universe Red, but is did you like was that like a preconceived idea to combine that in there, or did you just how did it work out? Well, I mean, really, that was an idea from back when I was like 13 or 14. Uh, we we never went this far with it, but uh, when I was younger, like I always thought it'd be cool to have a box set with uh you know our album and then a, like a nintendo version of our album and like an actual nintendo game that we programmed i was like that'd be so cool because i grew up with you know regular nintendo and then years later uh i guess my early introduction that there was actually like a scene growing is there was a website called 8-bit peoples and uh it had some of the early chiptune artists like null sleep and uh uh vert, vert? oh vert so good but uh, so I kind of like, you know, meandered around there and, and I ended up buying uh, like a kind of a custom made uh, product called uh, MIDI NES. Uh, and it's basically a Nintendo cartridge you put into your Nintendo and it has MIDI, uh, a MIDI input. So you connect it to like a, a keyboard or a DAW and then you can program, you know, actual Nintendo like it's the actual Nintendo. Yeah. You take the audio From out. The yeah. Console. So that was, the, uh, those are all the things that kind of combined to, together for Universe Red. Uh, just like kind of the idea of like how cool would it be? Because it's like still my like childhood Nintendo. Like that's the Nintendo that's on that album. And so, um, 
Yeah, that was that was kind of it. And I, and I mean, maybe even going back to your your point of uh, you know the different like bands kind of representing their like heritage or whatever. Like up until I just did the twenty three and Me, like I I don't really have much of like personal history. It's like I don't know where I came from. It's like my you know my heritage is like Nintendo and the eighties. So <laughs> that's well, that's that's our version of uh, where we came from. Were you a Zelda fan? Oh yeah, that was uh, that, that's one of my most vivid childhood memories is seeing the commercial for Zelda, and then having my dad bring me to what at the time was called Hyper Mart. It was like the it was a Walmart company, but it was like the precursor to what Walmart became. And, oh. And I remember Here walking in New York. In, it was called Caldor. So. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Hyper Mart in uh, Arlington, Texas. And we went in, and you know there it was, and like you could see there's a little hole cut out from the the uh, the package, and I was like, gold? Is it real? Is the it's cartridge gold? gold? And from then it was like my mind was blown. You know, just everything about it just like starts. You starts and you're standing there. It's like, what do I do? You just start walking around, and uh, yeah. So Zelda was was maybe my most important game when I was a kid. Uh, but since then, yeah, I, I mean, from the Nintendo era, it's like uh, Zelda and Metroid uh, are two two of my top ones, and then I think possibly my favorite game of all time is Punch Out. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you're an old school though. I yeah, mean, yeah. I grew up with Ocarina of Time, and you yeah, know, that's, like that's my yeah. That I I uh, you're leaving me give it give it to me, brother. I because. I guess we're brothers. I don't know if we established that. He's he's three years older than me. I'm so. the old one. So when he was describing these memories, I was born or almost born or just born. Yeah, I think Zelda was 86. So a lot of my yeah. childhood was watching him playing like the original Zelda and and Link and uh, what is it, Link to the Past and stuff like that. So then when Ocarina came out in what 98, I think that was kind of the prime time for me to be like oh because that's that's where i'm hooked like i'm a 3d zelda guy yeah. i'm not you know I, I don't eschew the top down view versions but i you know i have a preference yeah. fun fact i don't mean to brag but i have both versions of the cartridge uh, uh, there's two differences the fire temple music is different the right. mirror shield symbol is different and when you kill ganondorf in the end the blood is red Oh wow! I didn't and I have that. both cartridges. How do you know what's? Because is there a physical difference, or is it just no? Is, it, is there because no, no. there's that like mat? No, kind of no. Like what the, happened oh. was I couldn't get past Jabu Jabu's belly with my own cartridge, so I went to a game store and just bought two used ones. One of them just had the Water Temple beat, so I played with that and you know explored a little bit, whatever. And then I got another one which had the whole game beat. And you see the differences in there, like the mirror shield was okay. different. And then huh. I, I, I still play that game 20 years later. It yeah. just oh, yeah. hit its 20th birthday, <laughs> and like you notice differences all the time. In that. Yeah, I've played. I mean, I've played that game more than any other game ever because I mean they keep giving you reasons too because they had GameCube came out and they're like, well, here's the Master Quest version, you yeah. know, and then. Uh, 3DS, 3DS came out, and they're like, "Here's the 3D version." And I'm sure they'll do a remaster, you know, at some point, and I'll play that too. Did you see the videos on YouTube of it programmed in the Unreal Engine? I have. Well, not not extensively, but I've seen where it's. Yeah, I, I want to play that version. Yeah. Like, uh, but before we go, I want to thank you guys so much for your time. It feels oh, so sure. good. This is uh, like our 150th, 60th interview, and I feel so good to finally talk about Zelda. Awesome, yeah. yeah. That off my bucket <laughs> finally list. did it. Huge shout out to Psycho Stick for hooking us up together on this fateful That's day. Yeah. But now that your latest record, Universe Red, which I hope would hope that you have new music coming out soon, being that I was only halfway done with high school when the last record came out. <laughs> right, right. Uh, can we be expecting anything new? Yeah, so we, uh, we've we written tons and tons of music, and, you know, uh, being, you know, just like an independent, you know, DIY kind of band, we, we ended up doing like a lot of tours and still trying to figure out our flow, but uh, trying to balance like, how many tours should we do? How long should we stay home and just work on the album? Uh, so we wrote a ton of music, and we've kind of whittled it down. We recorded drums a couple of months ago. They're almost done being edited. Uh, we don't have a release date yet, but we're we're optimistic that 
the the release date will be soonish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, soonish, ex- people. Exactly soonish. That is <laughs> precisely uh, soonish. Take it to the bank. Awesome. But yes, there we've got uh, a lot of new music written. Uh, just really need to record it and you know do all the other stuff, album artwork, all that. So awesome. On the way, people. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much, everybody. We are here with yours and pick up their latest record, Universe Red, if you haven't already. You, you've had eight years to do it. Yeah, what are you waiting for? Catch them on their tour with Psycho Stick, and we'll see you next time on Heavy New York, everybody. Later. <laughs>